Hi everyone, thanks for joining us to learn more about MTSS today. Um, we will be talking about research-based interventions. I'm Steph Lundgren, a PD coordinator at ESU8. And I'm Tony Earhart, the MTSS and PEAT coordinator. Welcome. Here's our contact information. Um, feel free to reach out to us with any questions about the things we talk about today or just generally the MTSS process at your school or if you need support at a meeting or um, you know anything like that. Yep, definitely let us know. This is our agenda for today. Um, we'll really talk you through um, selecting interventions, um, some resources to make good choices, uh, some guidelines for implementing and selecting good interventions, um, questions to ask as you plan out, and uh, some tools to review um, research-based um, practices within that intervention. And then we'll share um, with you some of the supports that we can offer. Uh, this graphic is that MTSS pyramid that we oftentimes um, show um, to kind of give that visual of the process. And um, whether you're working with academics or behavior, uh, we start with tier one and that those core supports that we um, offer to all of our students. Um, some students might need tier two supports, which are extra interventions layered onto that core. And even fewer students might need some intensive supports. Um, and so um, that would be, um, you know, more intensive intervention with those students. And um, as you work through this process, you're also addressing the AQUEST tenants. Nebraska MTSS has a wonderful website that offers lots of resources for you to use. I'm going to go ahead and move our pictures so that we can see that better. Um, clear to the right, um, if you get to the MTSS website, is um, a resources tab. And there, um, you know, as we think about um, our interventions today, uh, you can do a program comparison. And within that, um, uh, you can select either math, reading, writing, oral language, behavior, and even some COVID-19 resources to compare programs on. Um, and if you don't see the programs that you're using or that you're interested in using, you can request that a program be reviewed by UNL. So they've been a really great partner in, in MTSS to make sure that you know, we're picking the right things. Um, we're using the programs that are research-based and proven to work. And the there's, website is linked on here also. Yes, and there's also a link at that tab um, to um, Ed Reports. Now, Ed Reports is kind of like the consumer reports of, um, of instructional materials. And they've also gone through and reviewed um, their alignment um, to standards. So why is it so important that we use research-based interventions? Well, um, you know, it's just really important um, that we focus on um, things that are proven to work, right? So if we have a limited amount of time with our kids, we want to make sure that in that time, um, we're using it as wisely as possible. We're using it with programs that are shown to have success for students. Um, in any of these different areas. So this goes along right with the why. So why is it essential? Evidence-based practices increase the likelihood that students will have on positive outcomes. So if your school isn't really looking into programs and not using research-based practices, you may not have the gains that other schools may have that are using research-based practices because this research is done for you. So that's why we're having this presentation now is so that these schools take the time to really look into these intervention programs because we want you guys to see the best results with students that you can. So we wanna give you the resources to use to look into those. So we really want you to use these EBPs, which are evidence-based practices. And um, according to the Nebraska MTSS, this comes right off their website. Um, this is one of the essential elements 
of any MTSS process. So it's the third one down. We would like you to use evidence-based practices in curriculum, in your intervention, and your assessment. So it's an important piece of the elements of MTSS. And there's more information on this also, and some documents if you want um, the survey. There's some questions on there so that you guys can evaluate how you're doing with getting research-based interventions or even your curriculum also. Intensive interventions are necessary for students with difficulties in academics and behaviors or behaviors. Here are some guidelines to follow. So a few guidelines I wanna know are, usually interventions meet for a minimum of four days a week. So if you think about if you've ever have days off of school, that's important that in order for it to be an intervention, it should be a minimum of four days a week in order for that student to receive that intensive intervention time. It's usually 30 minutes each time, but in order to figure out how much time is needed in an intervention, we recommend that you look at the guide or the handbook on that intervention on how much time is needed per day in order to catch that student up to grade level. Based on your tiers of where those students fall, that's how you'll base your minutes off of, and this may be found in your decision rules also. So um, we often see in tier two, 20 to 30 minutes um, per day with each student. And then in tier three, it needs to be a layered support. So that intervention should be more intensive and you may need additional time plus that 30 minutes. Interventions generally have a placement test so that it can show you where the student's at. And we always want your strongest instructor with the highest need of students. Your lowest student should be with your strongest instructor. Interventions also need to be trained in that intervention. So please let us know at the ESUA how we can help you get that training. If we don't have it, we'll look for it, or maybe we're offering it. You can go to our website and see right now which ones we have available. And I think this is really important now is to ensure you have fidelity checks on your interventions. Fidelity checks ensure that your interventions are doing it accurately. You want your students to get the best results from those interventions and the intervention needs to be doing it accurately in order to get the best results. And interventions should be compatible with their core programs. Some interventions don't mesh well with other core programs and we really want them to be compat compatible in order for those students to see success. So these are just a few intervention guidelines that we suggest at the ESUA. If you have any questions on these or you're not meeting them or need help meeting them, please reach out to us. Here are some questions to guide your selection in getting research-based interventions from any MTSS. There's just a few questions that you should look at and I kind of went over a few of what the ESUA would expect on the previous slide. So I'll just give you a few minutes to look over this yourself. And you can always come back to this also. But these are gonna help you reflect on your current practice and determine future steps. Okay, here are some tools for reviewing evidence-based interventions. We've shared these before, but these are the websites that we recommend if you're looking at new interventions or even curriculum, um, look around on these websites. This will help you base your information when choosing interventions off of research and not just opinions or if you like it. So we really want you to base it off the research. Um, and also use um, the website from what Steph said earlier um, on the program comparison chart in addition to these. And um, the link to this presentation, if you want to access all these links, will be in the, um, in the description of this webinar on YouTube. And here's some more tools for reviewing the evidence-based interventions also. Um, and the, these are linked, these subject links, so you can definitely hit those links um, when Steph has that in the description there for you. And we're always here available to support you and your needs. We want to um, base your support on what your school needs in MTSS. So there's different ways that I can support you as the MTSS coordinator. I can offer professional learning and come out to your district and help you in your professional needs with the PD team also. 
There's classroom coaching that I can provide along with other coaches at the ESU 8. Um, I can provide fidelity checks and come out to your district and make sure that um, there's fidelity to your core program or interventions or help train others on fidelity checks. And lastly, um, I'll always be here to collaborate and support you and your team, however, through email, phone. Um, and then Steph's here also um, as the PD coordinator and she supports many things in MTSS, especially in the reading core area and interventions. And we offer MTSS days now at the ESU 8. We had our first one last year and we saw many success stories from that and schools really appreciated our information. So we have developed a five-year process with two days in each year. We first start at the core and then you build your interventions from that. You of course keep doing the things that you're doing now but you pick the area of need, whether it be reading, math, or behavior, and then you work through these years. We also offer on-site coaching with these days, so we'll come out and help ensure that these things are being done. But we feel like this is a way to help you um, in your MTSS process and guide you in the things that need to be done in order to, ha in order to have a successful process. If you have any questions though, please reach out to myself or Steph on this. Absolutely. Contact us anytime and thanks for your time today. Yes, thank you.